But we begin tonight with the rule of law. In our democratic system, it is the principle under which all persons, institutions, and entities are supposed to be accountable to laws that are publicly promulgated, equally enforced, and independently adjudicated. In a perfect world, the idea is to protect the rights of all people in our society. It hasn't always worked out perfectly, to say the least, in this country's long and difficult history, but that is the idea. Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican Party like to claim they believe in the rule of law, that they are the party of law and order. That is, unless they are the ones having to answer to it. At that point, the law and order stuff goes out the window, and MAGA start argle-bargling about the weaponization of the justice system, rigged trials, and corruption throughout the deep state. That's all we've heard from them following a New York jury's verdict last week, finding Trump guilty on all 34 counts for falsifying business records in his attempts to influence the 2016 presidential election. And today, we saw the latest round of this theatrical performance of Republicans descending into the upside down. Attorney General Merrick Garland appeared before the House Oversight Committee and had to play whack-a-mole to the multitude of conspiracy theories spewed by the so-called party of law and order in their pursuit to protect not the rights of all Americans, but rather to distract from the unlawful transgressions of just one. For the first time in American history, we do have a presidential administration that's working to put its opponent in jail. I mean, that's a fact. Well, prosecutors aren't supposed to tamper with evidence, and it looks like that's what he did. He changed uh, the sequence of the documents that he seized from mar lago I'm sorry, that's a false characterization. I did he not hear the words tamper in the statement that Mr. Smith filed. He did not use those words. They you will come in here and you lodge this attack that it's a conspiracy theory that there is coordinated lawfare against Trump. And then when we say, fine. Just give us the documents, give us the correspondence, and then if it's a conspiracy theory, that will be evident. Republicans repeatedly tried to make a connection between the DOJ and Trump's criminal conviction in New York, which was easily debunked by the adults in the room. Well, did you select a judge in that case? No. No, of course not. The judge was randomly selected. Did you select the jury in that case? No. The jury was actually selected by Donald Trump and his attorneys. Did you reach a verdict in that case? No. Did you instruct the jury in that case? No. Did you tell the prosecutor what charges to bring in that case? No. I have to say I'm, I'm pleased and a bit surprised to see that the flag in this committee is still flying right side up because they want to turn it upside down, even as they want to turn our justice system upside down. Boom. Garland not only staunchly defended the mission of the DOJ, but warned about the dangerous consequences of what Trump and the Republicans have been doing. It comes as individual career agents and prosecutors have been singled out just for doing their jobs. It comes as baseless and extremely dangerous falsehoods are being spread about the FBI's law enforcement operations. And it comes at a time when we are seeing heinous threats of violence being directed at the Justice Department's career civil servants. These repeated attacks on the Justice Department are unprecedented and they are unfounded. This hearing also comes as some of those same House Republicans are threatening to hold a contempt vote over the DOJ's refusal to share audio tapes of President Biden's interview with special counsel Robert Herr, who investigated his handling of classified documents. A healthy reminder that Trump still faces charges of stealing classified documents and secreting them at his house with zero consequences, thanks to a Florida judge who behaves more like a fan. Just the way Republicans like it when a Republican faces the justice system. Garland responded to Republican demands for the her tapes, which, to be clear, they want so they can try to embarrass the sitting president by playing them on Fox or on their goofy podcasts. Garland stated multiple times today that releasing those tapes serves no legitimate purpose and could harm the integrity of future investigations. Oh, and it's also worth noting that at the same time, these Republicans were blathering on about the so-called weaponization of the DOJ by President Biden. The president's own son was sitting in a federal courtroom for opening statements in his federal trial. Whoops. I guess Biden's weaponized DOJ dropped the ball on that one. I'm joined now by Pennsylvania Democratic Congresswoman Madeline Dean, who was in that Judiciary Committee hearing with Attorney General 
Merrick Garland today. Congresswoman, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It is sort of basic civics 101, and one would think a congressman would know it, that a state trial and a state case has nothing to do with the Department of Justice. What was the point of that hearing today? To mislead the American public. That's what the Republicans literally wanted to do. They want to continue, whether it's on newscasts or in the newspaper or in a hearing with the Attorney General of the United States to mislead the American public. It is extraordinarily dangerous. And I don't think the American public is naive that there's a federal system and there's a state system. But we each, many of us on the Democratic side, had to just reiterate, please, Mr. Attorney General, what was your connection to the Alvin Bragg DA case, the state case in New York? Let's nothing. do a little. Let's no, do a the little, answer is nothing. We'll do a little civics 101, just in case there's somebody out there that wants to send this clip to their Trumpy uncle. Yes. I'm just going to go through these very quickly. Yeah. If somebody is charged with a crime in the state of Pennsylvania, in yeah. your state, right. does the Department of Justice determine who the judge is? No. If the person is charged in the state of Pennsylvania or the state of New York, does the Department of Justice choose what the charges are? No. Does the Department of Justice prosecute the case? No, they don't. Can the Department of Justice stop that case from happening? No, they can't. Can they intervene in any way? No. Did Merritt Garland have anything whatsoever to do with Donald Trump being charged with crimes in the state of New York? Nothing. Did he hire Alvin Bragg? No. Could he hire Alvin, Alvin Bragg? Bragg was elected. Boom. <laughs> was Merrick Garland elected? No, he was so, appointed. So the, the person that is actually accountable to the people of New York yeah. in charging Donald Trump, that would be Alvin Bragg, right? Yes. Yeah, Not correct. Merrick Garland. Correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. And this is literally because I know that my audience is super smart and they understand that there's a federal system and a state system. But send this to your Trumpy uncle because they keep on bringing this up on radio shows and bringing this up. Let's send do another. Send it to my Republican colleagues. Please. Oh, on, that might help. On the committee. Let's play one more piece. This is to me, the most galling part of all, because this strikes me as trying to make another January 6th. Here is uh, A.G. Garland responding to these conspiracy theories about assassination of um, Donald Trump. Most recently, there was an allegation that the FBI was authorized to, quote, kill the former president. What impact does this type of rhetoric have on the career prosecutors and law enforcement agents at the Department of Justice? This is dangerous. It raises the threats of violence against prosecutors and career agents. The allegation is false. As the FBI has explained, the document that's being discussed is our standard use of force um, protocol, which is a limitation on the use of force and which is routinely part of the package for search warrants and was part of the package for the search of President Biden's home as well. Your colleagues know that, don't they? Sure they do. Why would they do this? Do they want to get FBI agents killed? In service of one man, one now felon, 34 counts. I, I'm so proud of the New York system for, that the rule of law held mm -hmm. that we had by all reports from reporters in the, in the courtroom, the judge, the lawyers on both sides, prosecutor and defense, and 12 citizen strangers who did their job. They listened to the evidence. Uh, they applied the rule of law, and they came back with clarity, 34 felony convictions against a former president. Why are my colleagues doing it? In service and protection of a single man. Yeah. As the attorney general has said, and I have been blowing the whistle, Joy, for six years on this committee, they are spewing misinformation and lies to deceive the American people and to tear down our belief in our system of justice, our electoral system, you've seen it. The Speaker of the House has mm -hmm. been one of the architects of this. The misinformation is extraordinarily dangerous. Something A.G. Garland said, they have 115,000 uh, civil servants in the Department of Justice. The spike of threats against them has gone through the roof. And these uh, members of Congress cowered in fear with all of you, everyone else, on January 6th, and they don't mind at all that police officers were hurt defending y'all. They have no problem with letting those people continue to be threatened, have Michael Fanon's mom be dox. This doesn't bother them. There are right-wing uh, entities out there trying to find out who the jurors are and dox them. And meanwhile, you have uh, this piece of news. Uh, Todd Blanche, Donald Trump's attorney, has now gone to Judge Marchand, and here it is, to ask that the gag order be lifted against Donald Trump so he can go back to attacking the judge, the judge's daughter. What kind of threat would that um, put these people in? 
We're including all, the jurors at this point. We're all at risk uh, of threats of violence. Uh, it's true for members of Congress. It's true for election workers. We have an election coming up. We want public servants and, and citizens just saying, yeah, sure, I'll work that election day. I'll sit there at the polls for 10 hours. Uh, but no, not if I'm under threat of violence. This is extraordinarily dangerous. Uh, the AG has said it. And as I've said, it is, it's so insidious that the very people who are decrying that Americans don't have faith in our Constitution and our Capitol Police and all of these things are the very ones who are selling it. On the Capitol Police, you remember, I was there on January yes. the 6th, got hauled out in a gas mask, mm -hmm. held in a safe room for hours and hours with journalists, with Republicans, with Democrats. And we went back onto that floor, and many of these Republicans, including Speaker Johnson, voted not to certify the election.